In this video, we're going to learn about a really important feature of React Query, which is the Query Cache. And this is a feature the library provides out of the box and is important to understanding why use query works the way it does. Let me show you something you might find interesting. We are here at the home page of our application. I'm going to empty cache and hard reload. The DevTools does not show any query at the moment. I want you to observe what happens when we navigate to the traditional superhero screen. We want a slower network speed for this example, so I will throttle to fast 3G. Make sure JSON server is still running and navigate to traditional superheroes. We see the loading text and then the list of heroes. Go back home, click on traditional superheroes again. We see the loading text and then the heroes. Every time we do this, we always see the loading text. Let's now compare this with the RQ superheroes list. If we navigate, we see the loading text and then the list of heroes. However, if we go home and come back, we don't see the loading text. And this is because of the query cache that React Query provides. By default, every query result is cached for five minutes and React Query relies on that cache for subsequent requests. Let me explain in a bit more detail as it is really important to understand how use query works with respect to caching. The first time use query is fired for superhero's key, is loading is set to true and a network request is sent to fetch the data. When the request is completed, it is cached using the query key and the fetch superhero's function as the unique identifiers. Now, when we navigate to the home page and revisit the RQ superheroes page, React Query will check if the data for this query exists in cache. Since it does, the cached data is immediately returned without ease loading set to true. And that is the reason we don't see the loading text for subsequent requests. However, React Query knows that the server data might have updated and the cache might not contain the latest data. So a background refetch is triggered for the same query and if the fetch is successful, the new data is updated in the UI. Since our data is the same as the cached data, we don't see any change in the UI. I hope this part of use query and query cache is clear to you. Now you might be wondering if is loading is not changed, does use query provide another boolean flag to indicate the background refetching of the query? The answer is yes and the flag is called is fetching. Let's log both ease loading and ease fetching to the console, which will help us better track the network activity. Head to the browser, empty cache and hard reload, navigate to our queue superheroes, and in the console, you can see initially both ease loading and ease fetching are true. When the data fetching is complete, both are set to false. Let's look at another example where the data does change to make sure we get this right. Let me now navigate to the home page and back in VS Code in db.json, update hero name for Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman 1. If we go back to the browser, 
I want you to first observe the list of heroes on the left. We will see the cached list from before and then the list updates when the background refetching has completed. So Wonder Woman and then one. You can see in the console, ease loading remains false, but ease fetching changes from true to false. So in this way, React query out of the box leads to better user experience as there is a list being displayed already and then the list updates in the background. A user does not have to see the loading indicator every single time. All right, now that you have a better idea about query cache, I'm guessing your next question is about the cache time. How do we configure it? Well, like I mentioned, React Query sets a default value of five minutes for the query cache, and that is a good default, which you can leave as it is. If you really want to change it though, pass in a third argument to use query. The third argument is an object where you can configure multiple properties of which cache time is one of them. Let's set it to five seconds or 5000 milliseconds. If you now head back to the browser, empty cache hard reload, navigate to RQ superheroes page the query is executed and cached. If the query is active, that is, it has an active observer, it will continue to remain in cache. You can see the query key right here. If we now navigate to the home page, the query becomes inactive and after five seconds, the query is garbage collected. If we now go back to RQ Superheroes page, we will see the loading text again and then the list. While the query is still cached though, navigating back and forth, you will see the cached data and a refetch in the background. You don't have to see the loading state. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, query cache is a feature provided out of the box with a default cache duration of five minutes. And understanding what role it plays in data fetching is very important when using React Query. Hopefully this video has helped you with that. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.